Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another episode of Tottenham Hotspur Transfer Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the next potential signing for Tottenham who is Steven Bergwijn, uh, a winger for PSV who we were linked to very very heavily yesterday and it's a transfer that really does look likely to go through over the next couple of days. So today I'll be talking about the, the latest rumours and the most reliable rumours about this transfer plus going into depth about the player himself and what he could bring to Tottenham. So before I get into that video, if you do want more content like this, plus uh, tra interactive transfer talk live streams, match previews, reviews and much more, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. Uh, so to start, uh, just a quick uh, background uh, and a recap over the rumours about Stephen Bergwijn. Uh, the rumours started flying around in the Netherlands yesterday that uh, a move to, to Tottenham was imminent for the player. Now he is someone we were linked to last summer, which I, I personally think is a bit interesting because it, it kind of uh, raises the question, is he a Mourinho signing or is he a Daniel Levy signing? Um, regardless of that, I do think he's a player that uh, we'd be very, very lucky to get in. Um, so basically what happened was he was left out of PSV's squad in their game against FC Twente yesterday. Uh, after talk that he, he was actually travelling to London to try and get this move over the line. Now, this was various, a, a, a whole uh, horde, I suppose, of uh, Dutch outlets reporting that he had, that this had happened. And they quickly kind of started getting confirmed on the uh, English side of things with Sky Sports, especially talking about Tottenham's interest in the player intensifying. Now, these stories quickly turned kind of bitter. And it's something that the player himself has addressed as so they started to say um, Bergwijn is trying to force this transfer through. He never actually received permission from PSV to travel. And rather than an agreement between him and the club allowing him to be left out of the matchday squad, uh, these reports claim that Bergwijn himself uh, denied and refused to, to play for PSV. Now, Bergwijn actually put up a, a video on Instagram last night and it, it is in Dutch, but a few translations have said basically he's saying he would never refuse to play for PSV and it was a mutual agreement that uh, he would be left out of that squad to try and pursue this deal. Now, uh, aside from the player himself, the PSV manager and a few other players have essentially confirmed uh, this deal. Uh, Denzel Dumfries and Ibrahim Afaloy, uh, both after the game against FC Twente last night, were asked about this and they both basically congratulated the player on the move and said they understand why he, why he wants to go to a bigger club like Tottenham. Uh, and both kind of admitting that they have kind of uh, said their goodbyes. Uh, the manager himself said... I kind of clarified those reports about a disagreement between him and the player and he said uh, Bergwijn asked to be left out of the squad to, to try and pursue this move and the manager said he knows that there is a transfer to Tottenham imminent. He actually mentioned Tottenham specifically um, and he said the player was actually given permission to travel to London to, to get this deal over the line. So kind of, you know, you can have these really reliable sources that I always go on about who obviously we do trust a lot but when it's coming from the manager himself and the players themselves um, you kind of do have to imagine it's only a matter of time before this one is confirmed. Now as for the player himself, he is a very, very versatile attacking player who uh, plays with PSV and has done for his whole career. He's 22 years old and he can play on the left wing, on the right wing, he can play up front and he's even been known to play in a number 10 role and even deeper in a centre midfield position when required. Uh, he's played 16 Eredivisie games this season, scoring five times and registering 10 assists. Um, as for his career as a whole, he has nine caps for the Netherlands international team and he's played uh, 194 games with 47 goals and 48 assists. So that's almost 100 uh, goal contributions in uh, 194 games, which is a really, really good return. And I do understand these uh, kind of worries that people are having about the fact that he doesn't really play at a very high level playing in the Dutch league. It's not known as one of the better leagues uh, in in Europe and it's kind of self-confessed self by Dutch fans themselves that it's not the highest quality. There are a few good teams in there, namely PSV and Ajax and a few other teams that come up and down uh, Feyenoord most recently. Um, so kind of looking at his, uh, his, his stats on a more uh, prestigious level, mainly looking at the Champions League and they're not as impressive. He's played 12 games in the Champions League, starting seven of them and uh, he, he's yet to score a goal and he has only two assists. So there, there is a bit of a worry there about whether or not he will be able to make this step up to a much higher level than what he's used to playing in the Netherlands. But uh, having looked into him and his style of play and the type of player that he is, I think he could be a really good addition to the squad. And I've seen a few posts on Twitter and stuff talking about how um, he's a replacement for Eriksen in terms of the position he plays, but it's a very different style that he does have. And these things that I've looked into definitely do back that up. He can play, of course, in that centre role that Eriksen uh, liked to play in. Of course, he's now in, in Milan having his medical, so that, that, that deal does look done. So Bergwijn could potentially be a replacement for him. But uh, stylistically, he's a very, very different player. Um, now, Transfermarkt uh, value him at about £31.5 million. Um, and that's very similar to PSV's asking price, which is rumoured to be about £30 million. So this could be a, a really uh, clever buy and a, a bargain for us if we can get that deal done. 
Now, whoscored.com uh, often looked in, look into players and they have their, their strengths and weaknesses. And looking at what they have for Bergwijn, it's one of the most in-depth analyses of a player that I've ever seen. And it certainly bodes well. It, it, uh, it shows him in a really, really good light. Uh, talking about his strengths, uh, dribbling is his his biggest strength. He likes to take on players. His his numbers in terms of you know successful dribbles, dribbles completed, uh, taking players on are really really impressive. And I think that's something that we could really benefit from because we've been struggling to to kind of create chances to get attacks going in the league this season. Um, and he's someone who could change that with his very direct style of play. And you know as his assist numbers would suggest, he's he's also really unselfish. You no know, more assists than goals in his career. Um, his other strengths include key uh, key passing, through balls, and passing. Uh, which you know are things that Eriksson uh, really uh, thrived at in his early time at Tottenham and maybe towards the middle of those Pochettino years. Um, it's something we've missed from him for the last year or two when he hasn't really been on the form that we've that we had come to expect from him. So Bergwijn is definitely a player that could come in and offer a similar sort of uh, a similar sort of passing style in the middle of that uh, front three behind the striker if he is to play in that position. Um, now his other strengths are long shots and finishing. So he, he can score goals, he can create goals, he can do a bit of everything up there, which is something that we could really benefit from. And as I said, with the way we've been struggling uh, in the final third this season, his direct style of play, but also his ability to link up with the players around him could benefit us uh, really a, a lot. And it's for £30 million, uh, something that I think we should really try and get over the line if it is... Um, if it is one that Daniel Levy feels is worth it, the rumours say he has offered £20 million or some say £25 million. So with that, uh, the fact there's not too much difference in the valuation between the, the two clubs, it does feel as though it will get over the line. Um, now his weaknesses are maybe something that would be a bit of uh, a concern maybe for Jose Mourinho or maybe just something that can be worked on over the next couple of uh, months if he does sign. Um, and they are uh, at tackling and his defensive contribution mainly, which with the way we like to high press and the way we kind of have him struggling defensively. We need to get numbers behind the ball. If he is someone who's going to be, I suppose, not tracking back and things like that, it would be a big worry for us. But if we if we can get that uh, into his game, it's certainly he'd have a bit of everything of what we need in there. Um, now his other weakness is aerial jewels, but at five foot eight, I suppose you know it's not something that you can really complain about. It's kind of what you'd expect of him. The only small player I really know who who is so consistent in winning aerial jewels is Lucas Mora. There there aren't many players out there like him. Now his style of play again. Uh, who scored going to great depth in this and the main one is he's a counter-attacking threat which with the the pace that he does have he's a, a rapid player he's I suppose similar in that area to Lucas Mora um, it would be great to get him in there having that counter-attacking threat um, as others he likes to play short passes uh, likes to do layoffs so again that link-up play is one of his biggest strengths something he uh, not only can do but something he enjoys doing um, which could again be absolutely outstanding for us to get him get him in uh likes to dribble likes to cut inside and does not dive into tackles I suppose that does not dive into tackles would be more of a um a hindrance perhaps rather than a good thing because it it kind of links back to that weakness in defensive contribution but you know if he can if he can provide in the other end it's something that you can work on uh in due course but definitely something that does need to be improved um now, as I was saying about the the deal where the rumours are at the moment, uh, PSV apparently value him at about thirty million pounds, and they're unwilling to uh, budge on that uh, on that fee. Uh, the ports varying. Tottenham have offered twenty million. Tottenham have offered up to twenty five million pounds. Um, and with the way Daniel Levy does like to do business, I assume it will be a case of um, us offering thirty million pounds. But it will be about the structure of the deal, and and how quickly PSV will get that money. I'm sure they'll want it as much upfront as possible, but. You know what Daniel Levy, he, he always seems to get what he wants. Uh, look at this Christian Eriksen deal now. Some of the the little bonuses that he's getting in there from Inter Milan are absolutely crazy. Um, so I imagine he will he will get this deal done the way he wants to do it. Um, there are some reports now suggesting that the personal terms between Tottenham and the player are actually agreed. This, I'm sure, would have materialised over the last couple of days as he have, has travelled to London. Now, there are some sources suggesting that Tottenham have not one but two medicals booked. Um, for players this week you'd imagine Steven Bergwijn is the uh, the first one as I said I, I really do feel as this is one that will get over the line uh, over the next couple of days and we will see him uh, potentially in the squad for the game against Manchester City next Sunday um, but if not um, the, the league game after that for sure of course he, he'll be inel ineligible for the game against Southampton in the FA Cup because um, you have to the only players you can use are ones that were um, eligible to be in, in the squad when, when the initial tie was played now as for the second medical I mean, it could be anyone because this Bergwijn deal is quite similar to the Jetson Fernandez one, where the majority of it seems to have been done w without the um, mainstream media getting uh, getting wind of it. Because Jetson, I think, it was the Friday that uh, that actually first broke in the news, and by Monday everything was done, and then he was confirmed on the Wednesday. Um, 
So this is a very, fairly similar one to that. But if there is a player that I'd have to guess would be that second medical this week, if those rumours are true, I would assume it's Christoph Piantek. Um, now, Chelsea may have swooped in to try and steal that deal. I'm not sure about that. Uh, again, it's just these varying reports. But the, the most uh, reliable ones, I suppose, mainly being I think it's either Di Marzio or uh, Fabrizio Romano saying that uh, Piantek to Tottenham is looking very likely at the moment. So if we can get these two uh, deals in, it will certainly improve us and give us, I wouldn't say a real chance, but it would give us a big boost in our pursuit of top four this season. Now, uh, I do have a video out about Christoph Piantek, um, the same kind of thing, looking at his style of play and, and why I think he'd be a good fit for Spurs. So I'll link that down in the description in the comments below if you want to go and watch that. Um, don't forget to leave what you what you think about this deal for Stephen Bergwijn and if you'd like to see him as our second signing this window. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.